Starting server processes. One of common problems appearing during Sybase installation is that after the installation has been done and the server was restarted, Sybase is not starting automatically. But first things first. How to test if the server is running or not? Assuming you are logged on as a sub-user and you have already started the Sybase script to recreate the environmental variables, you can start the show server command. This command should show some information about Sybase processes active at the moment, but in this time nothing was displayed. This means Sybase is not running. Why? Sybase was installed using a non-privileged account, so the system could not be set up to start Sybase automatically when Linux boots. Our goal is to have such configuration in place. Let's first look at the catalog of the sub-installation. Sybase Engine was installed in the ASE 16.0 catalog. There is a lot of files there. The most interesting at the moment is the directory install. Let's list the content of the catalog. There is at least one file called run file. There should be so many run files as you have servers installed. So in our case, the Sybase database is one server and a backup server is the another. Let's look into that file. The file is a script. It starts with the shebang telling the shell how to interpret the code in the script. In the next lines, you can see there is a line starting data server. This program is a database engine server. The backslash at the end is just information that the command continues in the new line. Indeed, those are parameters telling how to start the server. Option D points to the master device. Server needs that option to know the location of the master device. Option E points to the error log file. If server have some problems when starting, then it's high probable that uh, some information will be saved into the error log. Option C points to configuration file where a lot of parameters are defined that determine the way Sybase works. Option M is used by shared memory components. Option N points to license file. Option I points to the location of interfaces file and it is very important during the startup procedure as interfaces contain definition of network configuration that will be enabled on Sybase server side. And finally, the option S tells how the server will be named. So now, if you would like to start Sybase, you would issue following command. When starting the command, finish it with the end sign. This character tells that the process should be started in the background. If you forget to type the end, then nothing critical happens. You will just have your console locked and you will need to open a new one. The console is full of messages now, but it's not locked. After pressing enter, we are again in the prompt. It looks that the server has started, so let's validate it starting again the show server. In the output, you can see the name of started processes, all the parameters sent to the server, and also the process ID. One hint for you. At the moment, the name of the server is at the end of the output. This is not the most convenience position for it. If you wish to have the server name somewhere irreal in the output, just change the order of parameters in the run file. How to stop the server? The correct way should start with connecting to the server, and next executing the shutdown command. After that, the database session will be broken and again using the show server, we can test if the server is operational. The output is empty, so no Sybase server is running anymore. It's a good moment to modify the run file for Sybase. As explained for the moment, we can change the order of parameters.
After saving the file, server can be started again. Now we can test if the server is running. Show server displays information about running process, what means Sybase is up. Now the name of the server appears at the beginning. This may be convenient, especially if you are working with a small terminal window and the output could be cut at some point. There is also a similar file for a backup server. So again, let's take a look inside the file. Backup server binary program is backup server. To start, following options are required. E is for error log. N and C tells about allowed number of connections to the backup server. I points to the interfaces file. M points to executable required by the data server to speed up the buffer operations. And finally, the S option determines the name of the server. So again, we can change the default order of parameters so that the name of the server will be in the first line of the output from show server command. Now let's test again which servers are running. As you can see, only the data server is running at the moment. So let's start backup server in the background again to have the console unlocked. After that, we can validate again if all the expected Sybase processes are running. There are two processes returned by show server command. One for database server and another for backup server. In this lesson, you have seen the run server files and how to start and stop the Sybase process.